Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel once again and uh, today I have another special motorcycling video for you. I am at my friend's place, his name is Manjeet. Uh, we used to be colleagues, we grew up in the same neighborhood back in uh, Bombay. And today he has a Harley Davidson collection in his house that will simply blow, blow your mind. So I'm here at his place and he's been kind enough to let me uh, film this and he's going to walk us through his entire collection of motorcycle collectibles and everything else Harley Davidson related that he has. So uh, let's take a look at his entire collection. So this is uh, Manjeet right behind me and we're just at the entrance of uh, his uh, museum and shrine, let me just... Shrine, Harley Shrine. Harley Shrine, <laughs> I see that's the right word, the Harley Shrine. And uh, so yeah, so now he's going to talk us through exactly uh, what he's got and you know the significance and the history behind all of it. So uh, yeah, let me just turn the camera around. Hi guys, uh, welcome, welcome to my house and uh, we'll, we'll show you the Harley Shrine. I call it the Harley Shrine, some people call it Harley Museum. But yeah, it is, it is my personal collection that I've, I've collected for all these years. Uh, some of it is is limited edition. Some of it is hand built. Uh, so so I hope you guys enjoy uh, what you see. You have this sign, and this sign is usually only available for the authorized Ali dealership. Uh, don't ask me how I got it. Uh, moving on uh, over here, you can see the, the the showpiece over here. So I had these engines, and my brother is into woodworks. So we both collaborated, and we thought, what could we do with this? And so we made this piece out of that. Paintings, I've got a lot of paintings. These are these are true uh, limited edition paintings that you get. Uh, there are a lot of artists like Scott Jacobs and all those people uh, which do Harley uh, related artwork. These were coins that a dealership in US was shutting down and they had made these coins. And uh, I, I partnered up with a, with a carpentry shop over here and they turned the coins into this kind of a display piece over here for us. Here, this this is a helmet stand that we built over here. I'll show you. So it's built out of GM engine parts, uh, and then the, the the design was mine, and we got it built in Abu Dhabi. Cabinet full of uh, Harley Harley stuff. Like you'll see, you've got uh, things like Harley guitars, which is which is just a piece. You've got a telephone. That's a tank telephone. You've got a wrench, which is a limited edition Willy G wrench uh, made by Snap-on. You've got cigar holders, uh, you know, garden gnomes. You've even got moonshine, Harley Davidson moonshine. Uh, this is where it all started, Martin. Uh, this was my first collection. So these are, these are show pieces made by a company called Maestro. This is what I first started collecting when I landed over here in 2003. And this was my first display cabinet uh, when I used to live in Sharjah. This is what they call is prison art. So this is a prisoner in, in US that makes these, these pieces. And then there's an agent outside in the free world that sells it on behalf of him. Again, you've got some short glass, short glass collection. But one thing I would like to point over here is this tube. That tube holds the groundbreaking soil of Harley Museum. So when they did the groundbreaking to build the museum in Wisconsin, that's what that, that's the soil from that. So that's a limited edition. Oh, this is this is a piece that we built over here. This was a Harley engine that actually was brand new. For some reason, uh, it failed, so it was replaced in warranty. And I knew the warranty manager uh, of Harley Davidson Company, and he was kind enough to give it to me. Uh, and I had to promise or give him my word that I would not ever use it on, a, on an engine, uh, on a motorcycle. So, so this is another collection of uh, of these are actually, if you see, it reads the model and the model year. These were tank medallions of Harley Davidson during the olden years in the 60s and 50s. So there was a company called Franklin Mint. They, they made all those tank medallions into this kind of thing. So it's sterling silver and gold plated uh, stuff. These are all limited edition numbered pieces with certificates. This piece over here is in the good old days, some of you, the young millennials may not even know what it means probably. It's 
used to have these VHS players. Yeah. Those big cassette players. And when it first started, you know, people never used to use the player itself to rewind. Okay. They used to rewind it externally. Back in India, when we didn't have money, we used to use a pencil and we yeah. would rewind it. But this was the Harley edition. So you load the cassette over here, close it. <laughs> you, when you close it, it starts rewinding and it would make mimic the sound of a Harley oh, the engine. engine. Yeah. So, so unique things uh, which you don't see. All right, another piece which is very, very limited and, and I'm uh, very cherished by myself is this brick. As you can see, it reads, this is a brick from the first Harley factory in Milwaukee, which was in 19, from which was built in 1918. Now, I want to point out the tanks, Martin, if you could just zoom on the tanks. These, these are, most of them are NOS, which is new old stock. These are tanks that I, that I acquired through the Harley dealership over here, which was sitting with them for a long time. This is another limited edition 85th anniversary piece that they had made and you'll see there's Elvis Presley in that. It's got the first Harley shed where it first started. So it's got the unique pieces of Harley Davidson history till the 85th anniversary. This was something that I acquired in, in Prague when I attended the 115th anniversary uh, of Harley Davidson. Over here you've got some collection of the uh, Harley Davidson stains which are made in Germany and you'll see, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the birth of a legend, it's got different decades. So Harley had this decade series of stains as well as these plates that you see on top. This again is a, is a unique piece. This was the 100th anniversary clock. And uh, this was, this is again limited edition, but this is more, more special to me because it's signed by Willie G himself. This is, I think this is one of my favorites in my collection. Uh, it's a 1974 shovel head engine and we've used the same chassis of the same bike. This actually used to be a bike of a very good friend of mine in, in uh, Detroit called Dozer. He had crashed his bike. He's a bike builder. And when I told him that I want to make a Tero, he said, I've got the perfect candidate for you. And he actually pulled out his old bike, which was crashed, and he made this out of it. All right, guys. So what we did earlier was we showed you all the memorabilia and the collectibles. Now we'll talk the real thing. We'll talk about the motorcycles. And, and I've got a few that I want to show you. So this is a 2014 uh, CVO, CVO stands for uh, Custom Vehicle Operation. This is actually a limited CVO, uh, which they also, some of the people also call it as a Rushmore because 2014 was the first uh, Rushmore edition of Harley Davidson. So this is, this is the limousine of Harley Davidson. This is, this is as comfortable as you can get. It's got GPS, it's got music systems. Uh, it's, it's amazing. You could do a two day trip on this and your butt or yourself don't get tired. It's absolutely amazing. I love this bike. And it's got a music system. I mean, yeah, it's... Uh... So, it's got, it's got a screen, it's got Bluetooth, it's got music system, it's got uh, communication, it's a CB. You, you can talk to your, your fellow riders, you can talk to your billion riders. And it's got a good music system, as you can see. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of the the best bikes that you can buy from Harley. This is my first love. So uh, I don't want to bore you, but I just want to tell you that I ended up in Dubai with a dream of buying a Harley. And so in 2003, when I first came, the main intent of coming to Dubai was to hopefully buy a Harley. And this was, like I said, my first love. This was my first Harley. It's a 2005 Fat Boy CBO again. It's limited edition. It's 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 a museum piece. It's a, it's an art piece. Uh, you know, I've added a lot of chrome, but if you look at the paintwork that came from the factory, it's stunning. So you can see this. This is actually grinding on the metal and then just the lacquer on top. Uh, you know, I can go on for hours talking about this bike all alone, but. Okay, so this is this is not a Harley. It's a uh, 
It's another company, it's a company called American Classic uh, Bikes in, in US uh, that makes custom bobbers. Uh, when I acquired this bike, it was in, in bad shape. It was completely, uh, you know, not close to basket case, but yeah, getting there. And I had to build it uh, and bring it back to life. So this is this is beautiful, you know. You can just sit over here and look at it, and it's got a lot of uh, unique uh, parts on it. Like for example, the spokes, Martin. If you could zoom, even the spokes are not the usual spokes. These are called twisted spokes. So they're oh twisted. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can if see can it. See. I'm not sure if it's visible on the camera, but yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's got it's got the Maltese cross theme going on throughout the bike. Uh, Germans love these kind of things, and the original owner was a German guy. Okay, so now we'll go to the stepchild of my my collection. Uh, but but it's I, I love this bike, and and Martin and I again have a connection to this bike because when we used to work together, one day I found this bike on Dubizel, and I asked Martin if he could accompany me. To go and have a look at it because I didn't know much about BMWs, but I love the the looks of the old BMW boxer motorcycles. So this is a 1951. Uh, the model's called R51/3. Uh, it's 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 an amazing bike. It was imported from Greece into Abu Dhabi, and then I I was fortunate enough to buy it from Abu Dhabi. The only reason the guy sold it was he loved the bike, but it had a gearbox issue and no one in the UAE could fix it. So fortunately I'm an engineer and I, I'm, I'm pretty handy with, with tools and, and uh, fixing stuff. So I fixed some of it myself. Uh, when I got stuck, I took help from a friend of mine back in the UK. Uh, so it was a joint effort of ours. Alright, now we're getting to the to the cream of the collection. You know, this, this corner is, is the best corner. Uh, I love vintage stuff. I don't know why, but I love vintage stuff. I love the the designs and and, and you know the the in the the basic engineering or or the simplicity of the designs. So this is a 1942 Harley Davidson WLA. It's also nicknamed the Liberator because this is, as you can see, it's kitted with the U.S. Uh, Army theme all over. It's got the gun rack. It's got the ammunition box. It's got the flat kit, the shovel. Uh, it's got a fire, it's got a fire extinguisher, the canteen. This was in World War II, Harley Davidson produced, I think, about 15 or 20,000 of these things uh, for the US Army, and it was also given to their Allied forces. So, you know, you'll see these things in Europe, in Germany, everywhere else. Uh, and I've, I've, I've got a lot of bells and whistles which I've put on it, uh, like the gas mask. You've got the real 1942 flag with 48 stars. Uh, I've got a sh I've got a shield over here, which is an old World War II U.S. Army shield. So a lot of things. But was this the actual bike used in the war? Yeah, it was. Okay, it was. So again, when I bought this bike, this bike wasn't even in uh, running condition uh, and uh, I had to go through it and, and I was lucky enough to be able to fix it and now it rides like a charm. Beautiful Springer front end, yeah? Yeah. Springer front, front end, because it's an army bike, you've got the blackout lights because you can't ride all the time with the headlights obviously in a war zone so you have these blackout lights over here this, mm -hmm. this is the marker light and the blackout light and that's why you see two lights at the back as well martin one is a blackout lamp and the other one is a regular lamp oh yeah the two lights the in the back yeah that's why you have two lamps yeah 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 okay so moving on over here we've got the the 1996 fat boy uh, with the famous Evolution engine, it's a carbureted bike. It's one of the best sounding Harleys in sound because this is the best sounding bike. This was the same bike, a lot of people would know, uh, Terminator 2. Arnold, when he first... Yeah, 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 yeah. he jumps off the bridge, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's all naked and then he gets on the bike and he starts riding right in the beginning. This, this... was the exact model that he was riding. So oh, yeah. this, this, is, this is pretty cool as well. It's just got 4,000 miles on it. It's almost brand new in all these years, but it, it's beautiful. So yeah, this wow. I acquired a couple of years back. Yeah, now I remember this. 
I remember the scene in the bar. He walks with that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, I need your shoes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> right. I hope he doesn't turn up over here. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Last but not the least, this is the my favorite, favorite, favorite bike in in my entire collection. Even though that's my first love, the the Fat Boy CVO. If I had to choose one. It's always a tough deal whether it's this or the fat boy, and uh, my heart would always be with with Journey. I call it Journey because it's a model year 1933 VLE. Uh, you know the guys that are Americans or that know American uh, cars, they would relate with the small block and the big block. This is the big block of the Harley flathead engine. So it's got a flathead engine, 74 cubic inch. This is the same flathead engine. But you can see the heads are different. This is 45 cubic inch. Okay. So this was the small block. This was. So how much is that in CC? This is 1200 CC. This 1200 is CC back in 19. 1933. Wow. Twin. It's got a total loss lubrication system, Martin. So you know the dealerships don't make much money out of you because you never service this bike. <laughs> it, it burns the oil and it just spits it out and it just you just keep topping it up. It's got no air filter in it. It's, you will see it on the other side. It's got a snorkel system. Right. Uh, I'm the fourth owner in all these years. The second owner, God bless his soul, had it for 63 years. Wow. And he <laughs> babied it, babied it. Uh, he kept every receipt, every part that he ever changed, insurance policies, and it all came in a box to me, which I, I didn't know what I was buying. So anyway, so that's, that's that. It's got hand gears. So oh yeah, the hand gears. Shifts the gears over here. Right. It's got suicide clutch, so you press your clutch. So this on is the, high, neutral, on the, low. On, okay, so we're showing you the clutch. So the clutch is they call it a suicide clutch. So when you when you want to change gears, you press this with your left foot, and then you release. So it's got a complete different setup. So what is this? If that is the clutch. This is your front brake. Front brake. So you better remember what you're doing, otherwise you're going to get yourself in a ditch. Yeah, if you ride this now, you're you're basically pressing this for front brake, where now modern motorcycles have it here. And on this, there's nothing here. Nothing over here. So it's just, uh, yeah. So, so the like the only thing common with the the new motorcycles is the accelerator. Okay. And the right foot clutch for the rear brake. For the rear That's brake. It. Okay. The other two are swapped. So here you should have your clutch. It doesn't have the clutch. It's got the. Front so brake. so technically, you cannot use the front brake and change the gear at the same time. Correct, that's why it's called the suicide clutch because the other thing is, in traffic, you can never keep the left foot down unless you pull it back into to neutral. Neutral, yeah, yeah. Because it's spring-loaded like a car. Now, this one has the same setup. If you see, this has the foot clutch. Yeah, it but does. This yeah. has a mechanism which has the friction discs inside. So even if it's, the clutch is engaged, uh, or, or sorry, even if the the, the motorcycle is in the gear, but you can disengage and leave the bike in gear and it won't move yeah. because it's got a uh, friction disc inside. Now the other unique thing is over here, so like I was telling you the oil, so it, uh, the tank is split into three. This is the engine oil section till over here. Mm -hmm. The back of this left side is your reserve okay. for fuel and fuel. the right full uh, side is your main fuel tank. Wow. Over here you've got a pump. So when you want to put some extra oil in it, yeah, that's me because I've been every time you store the bike for a few weeks, it collects a lot of oil in the crankcase. Then you have to drain it. Mm. There's a draining mechanism over here. This is the draining mechanism. So you press this and there'll be oil dropping from down. So <laughs> it empty the crank. Then you have to remember to push some oil back into the engine, otherwise you could have it sees the engine, yeah. Uh, then unique things in the cold environment, they used to have... Hold on. It's got a syringe over here. So you would suck the fuel, yeah. Then you've got... Here, these are primers. You open these and you can see there's a hole. Once you open, it opens up a, a, an inlet to the cylinder itself. Okay. You put this over here, you directly dump in some fuel into it and then you close the primer and then you start it. You start it. Yeah. Now the other unique thing is the key. These are the keys for the bike. Oh wow. 
<laughs> yeah, you guys can see it. Yeah, very, very difficult to copy here. Yeah. So the left is for the the lights, the right is for the ignition. And without inserting these, this is deactivated. Only once you insert it, it activates the switch. Okay. Uh, things like lights, they didn't have the backlit speedometers oh. or, or meters. So you had things like these, these are like street lamps. So do you over here you can see that on the meter as well. Oh yeah, so these are like externally are external lit. External lamps. With bulbs inside. Correct. Oh yeah, the big bulbs inside. Correct. Yeah. And a manual switch over here. You turn wow. the switch, it lights it on. A uh, six volt mechanism, kick start. If you see the kick pedal, it's just like a bicycle pedal. <laughs> and this used to be called a buddy seat. Uh, it's actually, believe me or not, it's for two people. Uh, not two people like us these days. <laughs> people were leaner uh, back then. And that's why you have these flowboard extensions. Yeah, they're quite large flowboards, yeah. And are these like actual lights or what is... What no, is no, these are, these are reflectors. Okay. These are just jewels or reflectors. These are show pieces. Hmm. You could just have normal bolts. But instead of that, people back then used to have these jewels. Reflectors, yeah. And then it doesn't have any brake light. Back then there was no brake light. So what I did was for safety reasons, I've added these period correct kind of old lights. And I've added a brake switch over there. So oh, that okay. these so light works. up as auxiliary brake lamps because this doesn't have any brake light. Amazing, man. Amazing. This is uh, truly mind-blowing. I can give you guys another view of his museum, all the bikes. Okay, and here's the man again. Very happy man with all his toys. <laughs> so again, thank you, Martin. And I hope you guys enjoy what you see. And, uh, you know, if Martin, any of your friends like the video and they want to see it in person, I'll be more than happy to welcome them over here. Thank you. Thank you, Manjeet. And here you go, guys. One last view of all the motorcycles and all the collectible items in his house. Here you go. I mean, this is like one of the best things I've ever seen in someone's house. I mean, you see a car or two, you see a motorcycle or two, but this is, this is mind-blowing. Yeah, and there he is in this kitchen. There's a living room. So this is actually in his house. There's a garden outside. And uh, yeah. So thank you guys. Thank you once again for watching another one of my videos. It's quarantine time, so we have nothing to do. Uh, so that's why you've seen a couple of videos on my channel of late. I just have some free time. So uh, I'm going to be back probably next week. I have another great motorcycle with a great friend that uh, I'd like to show you guys. So for now, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you again soon.